HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello, and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have Hiller Thanksgiving football highlights and also highlights from the annual Hopkinton High School Girls Football Classic, as well as the HHS Top of the Hill Ceremony. But first, HCAM News hosted a Main Street Corridor Forum. Town officials and engineers of the Downtown Corridor Project we're at the HCAM studios to talk about the project and answer submitted questions as we near the special town meeting. Um, the realignment of the intersection downtown is one of the main features uh, that will improve um, traffic flow there and safety. I, I see <coughs> safety as a theme throughout this project. Uh, the Marathon Way uh, will become much more safe as a frequent user of the common. Uh, I've always been nervous about that north uh, side of the common where Marathon Way shares road space with Main Street. It's kind of a big parking lot really, it's more than a way. And this will add some green space between Marathon Way and Main Street, creating a buffer for users in park on the north side. Uh, there's drainage issues downtown as you drive through over the past many years. You'll see it floods when there's flash floods, it just puddles up there. We're going to be fixing the drainage there, upgrading drainage throughout the project. Uh, today, uh, it would be very treacherous to ride your bike. I actually used to ride, try riding my bike to South Street. I was hit one day in front of Town Hall, and I haven't ridden the bike since then. $3.4 million of the $15 million project is covered by the town's taxpayers and was approved at previous town meetings. Could this project come in under budget? Yes. Could this project come in over budget? Yes the state would likely be on the hook for those items that the state is reimbursing or paying for, not reimbursing, but paying for through that $8.3 million. If that $8.3 million segment goes up, I believe the state will pay for that. If, the, uh, if we buy 28 trash cans instead of 22 trash cans and the aesthetics budget goes up, we would pay for that. But we would not pay for that without going back to town meeting and seeking additional funds through a future article if we have to increase the amount above the 3.4 that we've already uh, appropriated. One of the biggest topics of discussion was land easements that are part of the project. And what Amanda's going to pull up here, uh, and then Joe, you can kind of jump back in, is going to be the easement plan from the far west of the project to the far east of the project over by the common. There's three colors on here. There's light blue, which is temporary easements. And as she scrolls, and maybe she'll scroll a couple of times, you'll see most of this is light blue. Light blue means it's a temporary easement, and when the construction is done, the easement goes away. And then there's orange, which is a permanent easement. Most of that's around the intersection straightening area with a couple of other spots along the corridor. Uh, and then there's the dark blue. The dark blue are the utility easements that Joe has described um, we were talking about a couple of minutes ago. In some cases, it is only one or two feet. In others, there's five or even ten feet of space that people are currently utilizing as their front yard that is in actuality part of the public right-of-way. Now because we are doing widening um, in some parts of the project and we are adding in bicycle accommodations and in some areas there are no sidewalks at, at the current time and we're including sidewalks, that means we do have to recover that right-of-way and use it for bicycle accommodations and sidewalk accommodations. So um, if the sidewalk, or in this case at the intersection where we're realigning the roadway, the roadway itself is going beyond the public right-of-way, we are showing a permanent easement. Um, if, there, if a permanent easement is not required on your property, it's because the sidewalk is actually within the public right-of-way. 
and it's scary. I, I know that a lot of people, um, you know, they're maintaining it. They think it's theirs. But in actuality, legally, the public right of way is where the, the layout line has been designated and, and we'll, we're doing our best to stay within the public right of way. A project manager from the project design firm VHB, Amanda Bazinet, discussed that there is federal guidelines when it comes to land easements. This whole process, there, there are federal guidelines laid out. The town is following them. They've hired an appraiser and a review appraisal, which is required and the appraisers will be the ones that are determining how, um, how to compensate people. And we as designers in the town, they are not making those decisions. It is being handled by a separate party and, and when they are prepared to share that information, it will go out to the owners. There is also a process in place. If the property owner doesn't agree with the assessed value, um, there is a, a process in place for, for them to contest it and then it will go through, through the legal system until a compromise is made. It We're ready to get to that point where we can say, this is what will happen. It will only move two feet. We will regrade that new wall. We will put in plantings. And we put that in writing to them through the town manager's office. Um, so it's, it's a little hard when people don't trust their elected officials that we're trying to do the right thing on behalf of people. But when we can and we can put it in writing, we will do that as well to prove to people that we're trying everything we possibly can. Some of the other discussion topics about the project included bike lanes and the effects to the town common. You can view the full forum online at our YouTube page and a website hcam.tv. The special town meeting to vote on the project takes place on Monday, December 9th at 7 p.m. at Hopkinton Middle School. Hiller football battled Ashland in their annual Thanksgiving clash. Here's a look at this year's Turkey Day game. Hopkinton battled Ashland varsity football in their annual Thanksgiving classic. Ashland would play the starters at the beginning of the game, but ended up benching them since they will be heading to the Division VI Super Bowl to take on Bishop Fenwick at Gillette Stadium. The senior day festivities took place prior to the game. For the seniors on your Hopkinton varsity football team, starting with Robbie Bernardin, his parents Paul, Janine, and his brothers Tommy and Matthew. Next, Liam Buckley with Tom and Kate and siblings Bridget, Patrick, Nora, and Thomas. Next, Eric Davis with parents Kerry and Will and brothers Kyle and grandparents Peter and Joanne. Next, Reese Griffiths with parents Glenn and Linda and sister Caitlin. Next, Tommy Hamlet with parents Lisa and Scott. Next, Max Lakasha with parents Trisha and Chuck, brother Sam and sister Emma. Next, Zach Levy with parents Jennifer and Brett and brothers Max and Jack. Next, Sam Lozo with Ann and Bill. Next, David Quinones with Jessica, Kevin, Michaela, Ernie, and Tina. Next, Drew Saparochitz with Alex and brother Nikolai. And finally, Aiden Stewart with Maria, Roy, Isla, Carlin, Casey, and Owen.
So we got Aubrey Doyle, Aubrey Doyle Sr. being uh, shown on the on the camera here. I down I, in the end zone. I can zone. see him down in the end zone. Yeah, the the no all. Ashland struck first after a big pass. Kavanaugh back to pass. He's looking deep down the field into the he's middle. Open. And he's caught. And Pereira in pr pursuit. And he's going to miss the tackle. And he gets down the right sideline. And it's Brandon Grover going over 80 yards. 83 yards. For the a run into the end zone. And the extra point made it 7 to nothing. He cuts his way. And he's into the end zone. And Lopez... Five-yard run. There's your first score of the game, Don. The Hillers struck back a few minutes later with a touchdown of their own by Cole Salyards, and the extra point tied it at seven. Then later in the second quarter, a 17-yard run by Robbie Bernardin. Bernardin, the option again, fakes the pitch, cuts straight it up, and he gets down. And he's going to be into the end zone. Bernardin with a 17-yard run. At 2.17 in the second quarter. It was 13 to seven Hillers at the half. And he throws it in the middle of the field and it's caught by Mulvaney, cuts across the field. He's gonna be in for the touchdown. A 29 yard touchdown pass from Bernardin to Mulvaney. In the third quarter, Bernardin connects with Cam Mulvaney for a 29 yard touchdown. The extra point was good, 20 to seven Hillers. In the fourth quarter, the Hillers added another touchdown on a Robbie Bernard and Max Lakasha connection, and Hopkinton would take the win 26 to seven. The Hopkinton Hillers finished the season with five wins and six losses. Congratulations to the Hillers on a great season and best of luck to the Ashland Clockers in the Division VI State Championship. Coming up next, highlights of the annual HHS Girls Football Classic, scenes from the top of the hill ceremony, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Welcome back to HCAM News. The annual Hopkinton High School Girls Football Classic took place. Here's a look at what happened. The Seniors Class of 2020 took on the Juniors Class of 2021 in the annual Hopkinton Girls Football Classic. Here's a look at what happened. Megan Sullivan strikes for six for the seniors to make it six to nothing. From the seniors and that's gonna be good for a touchdown! Number 58, Alan Wood, I'm sorry. Number 58, Megan Sullivan on the carry for the seniors. Donald, Donald, touchdown seniors. So the wire gets it on the left side. Delaney Mick strikes for another six on a fourth down. Delaney Mick on the carry. And she is, she in for the touchdown? What's the call? We have a touchdown, Delaney Mick on fourth and long. Then Delaney Mick takes a direct snap for a two point conversion, 14 nothing seniors. A great run here by Meredith Sesnick. And that led to another Delaney Mick touchdown. And around for the seniors, and she's in for the touchdown! Delaney Mick with the seniors touchdown, gobble gobble! Then in the second half, Delaney Mick. 
she could go all the way. An 80-yard touchdown, 26 to nothing seniors. Touchdown seniors to Lady Mack, 80 yards. The juniors offense continued to struggle. Seniors with another big gainer on a reverse. Still on the feet, still on the feet. Tipped on the sidelines and finally brought down out of bounds. Then a bit later, a seniors touchdown. And the seniors one play to beat. And then she's over the fence, shot the end zone. So the wire bounces out to the right side and she's in for the touchdown. Gobble, gobble. Mary Sesnick adds another touchdown in the closing minutes to cap off a dominant seniors 37 to nothing victory. Congratulations to the class of 2020 for their 37 to nothing victory in the Hopkinton Girls Football Classic. Hopkinton High School hosted their annual Top of the Hill ceremony prior to Thanksgiving. Here's a look at this year's ceremony. The Hopkinton High School Top of the Hill program honored five Hillers alumni with their annual Top of the Hill ceremony in the evening. During the day, the five honorees had an opportunity to talk to some of the classes at Hopkinton High School. Fairfield was legit the one school that I got into that wanted me to play softball at their school that gave me some money to do that. Um, and it was two and a half hours door to door. So for me, I was getting a little bit away and I knew I wanted a small school. Uh, During the day, there was a town-wide power outage, but fortunately the generators kicked in and allowed the day to continue on. It's hard to know when you get out of school what you want to do, but you work at it and find something you really like and move on and keep going. Señorita Polanski me, me dio esa, este disco cuando uh, yo era un alumno. Creo que yo compré este disco, yo no sé. Uh, <laughs> pero eh, a mí yo me gusta escuchar música. I graduated um, my senior year of high school football. I broke my neck into the third, fourth game in the season. So that meant uh, at that time that I was in the hospital from October until April. But I love kids. And I leveraged that and my unique way of thinking. Right? I got to go to Hopkinton High School and then prep school and colleges. We're so privileged here. In the evening, the top of the hill ceremony took place. Dr. Lynch is certified with the American Board of Radiology and is a member of the American College of Radiology. And I remember feeling guilty um, in the days and hours, even months after that injury that I let them down and I wouldn't be available to help them out. Um, so it wasn't so much my feeling sorry for myself as it was um, feeling like I was letting my, my team members down. She has played a big role in the growth of the town through the positions she's held. Starting with a part-time position as a bank teller, she was recruited to work full-time at the town of Hopkinton Water Department in 1981. From, where, from which she retired in 2015. All right, how was it to be back at Hopkinton High School today and have a chance to talk to the students? It was great, and they were so nice and polite and asked good questions, and I really enjoyed it, yeah. And how did it feel to get the call uh, for the that you're getting honored today? I was nervous. I said, why did they call me? <laughs> But then I got, after I thought about it a while, I said, oh, that, that's an honor. So I, I usually don't like to talk about myself too much, so. <laughs> she has made a significant impact on not only our community, but those all across New England. We'd like to recognize her for her achievements and exemplification of what it means to be a Hiller. Here in these classrooms and on those athletic fields. 
I built friendships here that still exist today, and now our kids are growing up together. Back then, I even learned math at the old Golden Spoon, where there were no computers or credit cards. I had to make change on the spot while customers were staring at me, waiting for their money. Try to do that. Try to make change today without a calculator. It's a little difficult. <laughs> it has drastically contributed to the com community in many ways, such as working as a paralegal for the U.S. Attorney in Boston to investigate healthcare fraud cases, designing and managing nurse-run medication system treatment programs for opioid and alcohol use disorders, and providing psychiatric care at community health centers in multiple languages. It was great to be back at, at uh, HHS. It's been a, a while since I've been back. And uh, the students were great. It was a great opportunity to uh, speak with them and, and uh, hear their stories and, and share mine and, and hopefully answer some questions. And, and they were all just uh, they're great kids. And how did it feel when you got the call that you were getting an award today for the Top of the Hill program? It was a great, uh, great feeling, great honor. Um, Josh, Hannah had uh, contacted me a couple months ago, and so I was surprised to, to see that. And, and, shocked and, and humbled and honored all at the same time so it was a, it was a great honor to be here and I have to ask because I saw you talking to the uh, Spanish class today how many different languages do you speak <laughs> oh not barely English I think this is the accurate answer to that but uh, I think a few different ones maybe maybe three maybe three it was a terrific gift to get to reflect with the students and share about just how much has changed in the school, how many even more opportunities are available, and to share a little bit about the work we do serving people with uh, communication disabilities and the kids in Brazil that we're partnering with and their families. So they were real receptive and we had a lot of good laughs, so that part was fun. And then there was a real serious part where I'm here with my daughter Madeline and uh, we just feel so lucky to have all that we have and uh, we want to recognize how much privilege we have and be thankful for um, all we have. It was uh, really highlighted by during the school day the power went out and they started making announcements about lunch and how they're going to bring in food from the elementary schools and you know these are high schoolers who have more than enough food all the time and uh, it was ironic and, and kind of fun that they were going to bring pizzas and order pizzas and such. Um, so overall it was a terrific time. Getting to spend time with Dr. Lynch, uh, one of the inductees, was incredible hearing his story about becoming a medical doctor. And, um, and then uh, Gene Scarletta, who graduated from the original high school or one of the early high schools, was so fun. And, um, Matt Ellum and uh, Missy McDonald. It was really fun to see them again and share in their success. It was terrific. And uh, when you got the call that you were going to be honored today in the Top of the Hill program, how'd that feel? Oh, it was so humbling. It just made me feel thankful that uh, I get to share about what Hopkinton gave to me and that it also made me think and feel sad about my friend uh, Rory Horton, who's a beautiful artist who uh, I met an artist today in the school. Uh, she, she was sitting here, actually in this seat, um, or right around this seat, and uh, she seemed pretty disillusioned like my friend Rory was in high school. But uh, she had a gift with art, we talked about it, and uh, I told her a story about this guy Mike Matas, who Steve Jobs hired, who I don't believe he finished high school, but he had a brilliant gift with design. And so uh, these things come around full circle. And uh, these stories, it's a gift to get to tell my story and how I had to overcome adversity and the resilience of the human spirit. I'm just so thankful to have a soul that grew up in Hopkinton and uh, all the love. I'm looking over, my mother just came over here. So it's fun to uh, celebrate with family and uh, appreciate what we have. Thank you. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and I'm here to tell you what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, December 6th at 5 p.m., local poets and musicians gather to share their work on a new open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Saturday, December 7th at 8 a.m., tune in for some classic cartoon shenanigans on a new episode of Toon Time. 
On Monday, December 9th at 7 p.m., the Special Town Meeting will air live on HKM TV. And at 7.30 p.m. on HKM Ed, Dr. Kavanaugh talks with HHS drama teacher Valerie Von Rosenving about her work with the high school theater department on a new episode of Highlights from the Hill. On Tuesday, December 10th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Select Board meeting will air live on HKM TV. On Wednesday, December 11th at 7 p.m., HHS students gather to share and show off their varied talents on a new edition of HKM Ed Special. And on Thursday, December 12th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HKM Ed. And also on HKM Ed, the Hillers Football vs. Milford game will air. If you want to know more about all of HKM's shows before they air, then head over to hkm.tv slash newsletters, where you can sign up for our HKM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton community calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, everyone. The South Asian Circle of Hopkinton hosted their annual Diwali Gala. Diwali is the five-day festival of lights celebrated by millions of people across the world. Here is a look at the tremendous performances.